Hello everybody, how are you all doing? It's Len here. What's up? What are you up to today? Let me know. I want to know. I'm curious. Um, yeah, so anyway, today I'm going to make a video about what I found out of the ordinary slash strange, maybe a bit of a culture shock when I went over to Japan. And yes, I know everyone has made one of these videos, but you haven't seen mine yet. Yeah, I don't have my point of view, so I'm going to give it to you whether you ask me to or not. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a little sick right now. I have a bit of a cold. It is like minus eight outside. It's like the beast from the east happening right now. Storm, whatever she's called, what's her face. So I'm a little cold, my nose is a little like sniffly, runny, so yeah, let's, we're gonna get through this, but I have my heating right here, I have a hot water bottle on my lap, I've got my scarf, I even built a little like uh, blanket fort for my cat so it doesn't get cold, that's how bad it is here right now, this apartment is literally a fridge, but yeah. We can get through this, I can get through this and survive and keep on making videos again, whether you want me to or not. With a bird with a huge piece of bread or something in his mouth on the roof. Good for you! Let's start with the obvious things, things that people say all the time, things that people everybody knows that this is how it is when you go to Japan. But yeah, I want to cover it anyway. So first things first, taking your shoes off. Yes, you take your shoes off when you enter somebody's house, when you enter an inn. Uh, I think some changing cabins, I didn't experience those. But it was pretty normal, it was pretty standard. I do take my shoes off myself when I get home. I don't make my guests take their shoes off, but I don't like the idea of bringing in things from the street beneath my shoes. So the shoe thing, not a culture shock. But I thought I'd mention it because it's like the, one of the main things. The second thing that's pretty popular are the toilets. It's usually one of the first things that comes to mind. You have the squat toilets and the western style toilets. I say far away from the squat toilets. They kind of freaked me out. I know some people prefer it. It's easy. You just squat. It's better for you. Just no, no. So western all the way for sure. And if you say Japanese toilets, usually you see the toilet with the big like touch pad with all the functions and the water that shoots up. Yes, yes, that exists. And that was really fun to experiment with and yeah, surprise! You've got water shooting up your booty. And best thing ever, warm seats. At first, I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the feeling. It was like sitting down after someone had just been there. You know, like, seats already warm. Ew. But after a while, if I didn't have a warm seat, it was just like, whoa, that, that's cold. So yeah, warm seats were really cool. I did have one bad experience with the toilets, though. Just one in a mall where I, where I couldn't figure out how to flush the toilet. Because I memorized the symbols, I know what it looks like, but I couldn't find it anywhere on the wall, behind the toilet, on the touchpad thing, I couldn't find it, it was so embarrassing. So I just waited for the bathroom to be empty, to just like get out, wash my hands and get out. It was just number one, I'll say that, it was just number one, but yeah, I couldn't flush the toilet. So Japanese toilets are awesome. Um, I'd love to get one in my own home one day if I one day get to like refurbish my house or like build a house and have lots of money I would like a Japanese toilet please because those are really cool Another thing and this is a really random one is that toilet doors open inwards That was that's weird Maybe it's like not to open the door and injure the person on the other side. I don't know but It just felt like you want to get out of the toilet and you open the door towards you and you have to like shuffle because you have the behind you and you're like I don't know, it was weird and that was everywhere, literally everywhere the door opened inward even, oh, oh, like even in my Airbnb but my Airbnb was really small so probably the door didn't open outward that I would understand but in public bathrooms there's more than enough space so why, why would you open inward? that was weird is that weird? Am I weird? I don't know, but why? Why would you open inward when I'm in a tiny stall already? Okay, let's talk about escalators because here in Belgium, people don't have it in, like, it's not written in their DNA to stay, stick to one side on escalators. And my English side, it it just drives it absolutely bonkers. When people stay in the middle of an escalator, it makes me so mad, like irrationally mad. I'm like, excuse me, move out of the way, I'd like to go through. I know, it's one of my biggest pet peeves. So in Japan, it was like, hallelujah, people stay on one side, stay on the left side, but the strange thing is that they 
advise you to not walk down or up the stairs I think maybe to avoid people from rushing to get to a train or a subway and injuring themselves but yeah I just I'm impatient I just I walked yeah sorry sorry Japan I disrespected one of your rules I didn't wait in line on the left side I just went down because yeah I when I want to go somewhere there's no stopping me I'm like moving I'm moving people yes left side of the escalators in Japan except except in Osaka everybody in Osaka was on the right and I just gotten used to the left thing from one week in Tokyo and I arrive in Osaka and everything's changed again so yes that was really funny that was yeah <laughs> I don't know why I'm giggling nervously. So escalators, let's go on to trains. Could it, it kind of, yeah, it kind of goes together. Train stations, that was a big one for me. They are huge. I talked about it a lot in my vlogs. Like I got lost forever, looked for places forever. You can go through a station and it can take you 15 or 20 minutes to go from one exit to another if you don't know where you're going. It's crazy. So transferring lines can take a really long time and I realized that the very first day I arrived because I arrived at Ikebukuro and I wanted to go to Ueno and then like to my inn and I transferring from the Yamanote line to the Hibiya line with my suitcase and the stairs and the yeah stations are huge transferring takes time you need to take that into account for your commute so yes if you come from a little city even if the freaking capital city of your country like Brussels where transferring takes under five minutes that was a big one that was something I needed to get used to ASAP otherwise I'd be losing minutes at the time like every day transferring from one place to another um, also train stations and subway stations and everything the jingles I love the jingles. I started recording them towards the end and I wish I would have done that from the very beginning because each station has a different jingle each line I think has a different jingle so you know which train on which direction it's going I don't know I really like the little jingles it's, it's happy it's bright it's peppy it puts you in a good mood I don't know I like the jingles the station um, where I went to a lot at the, ver the very first week where I was staying in Tokyo was Uguisu Dani and I think Uguisu is a bird if I remember correctly I think it's a nightingale I'll correct myself I should have researched that before <laughs> filming this video but I think it's a nightingale and it does a little nightingale sound and it was I liked it it put me in a great mood just these little jingles and not only in train station you'll hear like jingles everywhere in, in the streets but I really enjoyed the ones at the train station we don't have that here when we have a stop it just does like this monotone beeping um, and yeah it's pretty boring actually <laughs> still on the trains um, the fact that you don't talk on trains uh, I was warned and I'm fine because I was traveling alone anyway and I like the silence the silence felt nice when people were actually talking talking loud like a group of tourists or people who just disregarded the rule when there was talking on the train it felt so loud try going on a train here in Brussels you just I got my headphones in all the time here you can just appreciate the sound of transportation the train the subway the jingles it felt good so I didn't really felt I didn't really feel shocked about the silence uh, people kept to themselves a lot of them were reading sitting standing up they were reading I saw a lot of people watching movies or anime on their phone playing games and what really shocked me were the people who were sleeping standing up I mean that was funny AF they were just like marshmallow people they were their bodies moved with the train but they never fell how did he do that? When I'm riding the subway, I plant my feet and I'm like holding both things because I just, I fall over like a plank and these people were just like, whoa, cool AF. Another thing I noticed were the smoking areas. So smoking and walking wasn't really a thing. I did, it did happen. I did see people to do it more in Osaka than in places like uh, Kyoto and Tokyo. Uh, but they have designated smoking areas little bubbles in parks or little like I call them aquariums at stations it did feel nice not having to walk behind smokers inhaling their smoke or having someone gesturing with their cigarette as they're talking and having to be like whoa watch out dude jeez <laughs> with the smoking areas there were also a lot of vending machines you probably already know there's vending machines everywhere vending machines galore vending machines in the places where you don't expect there to be vending machines and it was 
cool. It just felt like monuments, like the symbol of the country. <laughs> okay, that's really weird to have a vending machine as a symbol, but they were everywhere all the time and clean and well looked after they're not run down like vending machines here where you can see people have been like kicking it and stuff so yeah vending machines big thing i like them I, I enjoyed them i tried hot beverages and new beverages and they were like i don't know i like vending machines they were cool for some reason i think everything in japan to me is cool because it's not it's different and it's new and it's from japan so it's cool <laughs> yeah so smoking areas vending machines um no trash cans. There aren't many trash cans except near vending machines, but those are for like your bottles and your cans mainly. So for the most part, you have to carry like a plastic bag with you and take your trash home. So yeah, no, mm, not many trash cans, not many bins. And that's really ironic because everywhere is super clean all the time. Whereas here we have bins every 50 meters and the streets are oh, so frustrated with my city at the moment i don't know why i think i got the winter blues and everything is gray and i see the worst out of everything and i clean up clean up the city please there's trash everywhere but yeah japan doesn't have any trash cans and it's clean though it was for me it was a little frustrating to have to carry my trash home with me all the time but you know like first world problems right hang on i'm gonna Cut and blow my nose. Also, yes, carry a plastic bag, but you won't have any trouble finding a plastic bag because they just give you plastic bags all the time. That was that was definitely a culture shock for me because here plastic is like the devil. <laughs> we don't give plastic bags out anymore. It's paper bags or bring your own bag. Sometimes they don't even offer you a bag. In Japan, they automatically give you a plastic bag and I didn't have the vocabulary to refuse and I felt like maybe they would be offended if I was like no please no bag no pollution but yeah they give you plastic bags everywhere one of the things I was really scared well not scared but not looking forward to have to deal with once I was there is the fact that you can't really blow your nose in public in Japan and I know as a foreign girl I'd probably be excused but I get runny nose a lot if I go from hot to cold to cold to hot or something my nose starts running and it's not like I have a cold but I just need to evacuate you know I just can't sniff it back in it's just water I need to blow my nose and I was so scared that every time this was going to happen I'd have to find like a bathroom just to blow my nose or something but it turned out to be okay I just like sniffle a little or like discreetly wipe my nose like <laughs> it's really weird like wipe my nose in the corner of something I, I figured it out and I got less stressed as time went on it wasn't as bad as I imagined it I imagined that if I took out an old tissue from my pocket everybody would be like oh, oh but it was was fine but it was one of my concerns when I came over to Japan one of the other things that I didn't know but I realized once I got there is that walking and eating uh, is not really it's kind of frowned upon it's better if you buy something and you want to eat it to just stay next to a vending machine or stay in front of the konbini where you bought your food for example and a lot of little um, stalls like food stalls uh, we'll have a little like tiny space next to it and they'll say like oh can you please eat there please and yeah i'm not sure why it's rude though maybe because you spill or you might walk slowly and bother other people i don't know but yeah no walking and eating strangely enough no walking and smoking that was fine by me but walking and eating mm, okay why not one of the main questions i got from my friends and family when i got back because they know me and they know how tall I am. I'm 178 centimeters, which is an awesome height. I love it. But they asked me if I felt tall. Now, within a crowd, I didn't really feel that tall, to be honest, but I did feel tall with doors and entryways and having to duck down a little more than usual. But I did not feel like the monster I thought I was gonna feel. There are a lot of shorter people, that's for sure, but there are a lot of average size people well, average to me anyway so i didn't feel as ginormous as i was as i thought i just had to watch my head a bit more when in japan in big cities people keep to themselves you do you you go where you need to go and people don't really talk to each other in the mountains though people even if they don't live there even if they're like going on holiday or something but when i was hiking in the mountains whether it was kurama kibune and uh, which ones did I do, like Miyajima and a bit, like maybe Nara a little bit 
people say hi when they cross your path. When you cross path with someone in the mountains while you're hiking, you say hello, you say konnichiwa. And even if you're passing by five people, you say it five times and they'll all say it to you. And that was really surprising to me because I was so used to people just being very stoic and keeping to themselves and living to their, living their lives. And at first I couldn't even respond because I was like, what, they're talking to me, little foreign girl? <laughs> but yeah, you, when you're in the mountains, everybody says hi and that's cool and it's different everybody's smiling and they're like konnichiwa and everybody's happy so maybe i don't know fresh air from the mountains makes everybody happy i found that really fun bus drivers in kyoto you usually get from a to z in a bus that's how i experienced it anyway and bus drivers they would say when they're starting and stopping and i found that really cute my japanese isn't good enough to remember but they were like i'm starting I'm stopping. Let's no, something like that. Like a nice warning, like I'm gonna stop, so be careful, don't fall over. That's how I interpreted it anyway. Um, also I found that sign language with the hands is used a lot. They a lot of the uh, working staff anywhere wouldn't talk. At least not to me, they wouldn't talk a lot. In Kombinis, yes sure, but in a lot of um, but in subways and everything, they would be like this or like this or like pointing. Some days it really bothered me that they would be like in your face and no explanation and I'd be like, why can I not get in that train? That's my train, that's where I want to go. Um, but yeah, that's something you should know. Like this is no and this is no and I don't remember any other ones. <laughs> if you have any more, please let me know because I've kind of forgot about I don't remember anything else. But yeah, sign language is used, was used a lot, at least for me. Probably because I'm a foreigner. I don't know. Onsen! I did not get to speak about onsen a lot during my vlog because obviously I can film there because everybody's naked. And I know a lot of people who have never experienced onsen before are a little scared about having to take all their clothes off and being naked with other naked people. First off, most onsens are segregated. So that's probably one load off your mind, I don't know. Um, there are private onsens, but I went to the like the public uh, one indoor and two outdoor baths, and it was fine. I was a little nervous, but nobody stares at you. Nobody looks at you. Maybe like one or two heads might pop up, like oh, there's somebody coming, but nobody gawks at you. And that was one of the things I was scared of because I have tattoos and I have to find like tattoo-friendly baths, but still. There weren't many tattooed people in those baths so i was a little afraid also a little afraid of making a mistake but as long as like you wash yourself before and do everything you need to do and like lock your clothes in and respect on some etiquette like don't dive into the friggin pool or anything just wait in um you'll be fine don't be scared because i had such amazing experiences with the onsens all of them even the small jakotsuyu one in in tokyo was awesome and the huge one in hakone was wonderful so please don't let the fear of nudity scare you out of the onsen experience because it's really worth it when i first arrived into japan it did feel like i just gone dyslexic because everything is kanji and I can't read kanji I'm, I'm really slow at reading hiragana and katakana so all these signs that I can't read and it made me realize how much people read throughout the day but like unconsciously we, we see letters and we know what they mean and our brain like takes it in and you don't really need to stop and stare because you just like absorb all the writing you see every day but in Japan it, it felt so weird it's like I was blind to certain areas and certain signs and that was one that was really weird for me it was a little bit of a shock of how much it bothered me not to be able to read where I was going and like it's like my brain wanted to absorb all the signs that were coming to me and I couldn't so that was a really weird one um, also it did not help because some stores you just don't know what they are before going inside and that's how I ended up in that episode in that store that was not a manga store as I thought it was <laughs> go find that vlog <laughs> I was really embarrassed because it took me a while to notice that I was not supposed to be there I don't think so anyway <laughs> finally in Japan I felt safe love the guide said 
Yes, Japan is safe, but still be careful, big pockets and everything. Feeling safe is a trap and you have to be smart. And yes, I totally agree with them. I even mentioned it in my own video, but I felt really safe, even in places a little that were a little sketchier, because sketchy in Japan is like nothing here. But even places that did seem a little sketchier, especially um, I'd say maybe south of Osaka, it was a little more run down and I, it did get dark really early and mm, as a habit, I did feel a little like I should be careful, but everywhere was super safe. Anyway, that's the end. I just wanted to mention that Japan felt really safe and as a solo traveler, I think it's a really good destination, especially as a girl. There are areas that you need to avoid just same as everywhere, you need to be prepared and look them up, but it was fun. I love Japan. I want to go back so badly, so culture shock, not really. Some things may be a bit like, huh, why? Some things I expected, some things were a surprise, but all in all, I wasn't completely lost. I want to know if you went to a foreign country or if you went to Japan, what the biggest things that shocked you were? What was the situation where you found yourself abroad and you were completely taken aback? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, I hope you're not tired of my Japan videos. They're almost over. I'm rounding everything up, like uh, tying up loose ends of what I want, still want to say. We're almost done, guys. I hope you're not tired of them because I'm really enjoying talking about my trip now that the vlogs are over. But if you are tired of them, not much longer. I promise, but yeah. By the way, don't forget, I stream once a week on Twitch Creative every... It's usually either Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. At the moment, it's mainly Fridays. But please come hang out with me. I draw and we chat and we have a great time. So that's Twitch TV slash Ikutree. Also, I'm going to answer some questions on Twitter. So ask Ikutree any questions about Japan or about anything else. Don't hesitate to ask. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'll see you all very soon in another video. I love you all. Bye guys!